Hello again, Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. Today, we're going to talk about a couple more things that I've learned from some of the vintage hats that I have or have seen. Um, let me tell you first about this sweet little straw number that I'm wearing. My friend Ann Gartland, who lives in Yonkers now, um, I've known her for a very long time since graduate school days. She was cleaning out a closet one day and came across this little number and decided that she didn't need to keep it anymore. So she contacted me and asked me if I could give a home to her little sombrero. I was delighted to do so. This little hat, I think, is dated back to 1937 to 1943, along, along those years after looking through my books. This shape and style of hat was pretty popular back then. It... Um, Probably came into Anne's hands through a thrift shop and it was used in a theater production, but it's been sitting in a box for a lot of years. But what I really fell in love with on this hat is this unique technique that I have never seen before. This hat, let me go a little bit forward so you can see it. This hat is Panama straw and a very good quality straw, but it's not blocked on a wooden hat form the way most hats are made. Let me take it off and show you a little bit better. What shapes this hat is this technique of pinching and stitching little pleats in the front of the hat. You can see that it was made from a straw hat body, but not shaped on a block, just stitched into place. Now I've never seen this on any other hat, but I thought I would fool around with it and see if I could um, replicate it. I tried it on fabric and it was not as, as successful as it is in straw, but I'll show you what I did. First, I tried it on denim. This is sort of a stretchy denim. And I realized it's really kind of tricky to do, but let me put the camera on the table and I'll show you another thing. I decided to try shaping this flat fabric over this curved hat brim by using the same sort of pinching and stitching technique. Now I've managed to do it. Uh, it took me a couple of tries because I did it incorrectly at first, but I, I basted the little pleat in and then I found that that really didn't help. It's better to just pinch it with your fingers and then go in diagonally like this. And pulling the thread actually makes the tuck. Oops. I haven't exactly mastered it yet, but I'm getting better at it. And I have a feeling that the technique is best used as it was in the hat on straw, which is has a stiffer consistency. But I wanted to just fool around with it. I think this is something that's worth playing with. So see if you can try it, and uh, I would love to have some input from you as to how it works. One other little trick about this hat is the way the little bow is done. This is half inch grain ribbon and it's just folded over and put in place where the seam of the hat brim meets the crown. But for the little bow, for the bow to hold its shape, there's a piece of wire inside the bow, which gives it a little flare and keeps it in shape. So isn't that a sweetie? Let me show you another one that I learned a long time ago. Um, you've seen this in one of my other videos. This is just a little 50s style hat that Dupioni silk um, leaf on it and some vintage veiling. Well, I learned this vintage leaf pattern from a 1920s hat that um, a designer bought in New Orleans and brought to the Alabama Shakespeare Festival where I was working to show me. We were doing a show set in the 1920s and the hat that she found in the vintage store was far too fragile to be used in the show, but she was so fascinated with it, she wanted to show me. And I took apart one of the leaves on the hat to see how this was made. And I'll show you a hat that I've made recently utilizing this technique. 
I really love it. I've used this on quite a few different hats. But I'm going to show you how to make this little 1920s leaf. So here you have a pattern. It's just this interesting little shape which you, and I've cut them out of Dupioni silk, like this. What you do is you fold it in half right down the middle. And you're going to sew it. Let me get this lined up correctly. You're going to sew this curved line in a quarter inch seam. I'm not going to do it here because I've already done one, as you can see here. Now, what you do is turn it inside out. I mean, turn it right side out. I would normally press this, but I'm not going to take the time here. Now you're going to gather along this little curved line. I have a needle threaded here. Let's give it a try. Just about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And remember when you gather like this, you can take larger stitches because it helps gather the fabric in closer. Pretty easy. Knot it off by sewing the ends together. And there you have a pretty little silk leaf. And you see, by overlapping and changing the colors, you get kind of a neat effect. So I hope you'll play around with these. This is a short video today and let me know what you do with some of these techniques. Please subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching and why not a hat?